As much as I would love to say that Big 12 is the best conference of college football, I'd be lying through my teeth if I meant it. No question the SEC, proof is in the pudding, they're the best because they've won the last five national championships and they have at least two heavyweight contenders in LSU and Alabama. One of them could be playing for the national championship in New Orleans on January 9th. We'll talk more about the Tigers and the Titans in a little bit, but first let's talk about the defending national champions in Auburn. Will the Tigers get to the national championship game at the end of the season? Only if a miracle occurs. It's not going to be the same Auburn team as a year ago. The Tigers return only three starters on both sides of the ball and won't have Cam Newton or Nick Fairley back. The good news, though, for Auburn is that Gene Chizik did get a big contract extension during the offseason. He'll now make $3.5 million a year. More good news for Auburn. They at least get Michael Dyer, the running back, returning after he gained over a thousand yards in his freshman year in 2010 and was vital in Auburn's victory over Oregon for the BCS title game. But for the Tigers, they're going to be starting a lot of new players and their schedule, at least the road games, look brutal. Playing at Clemson, at LSU, at Arkansas, at Georgia, and there's that home game at the end of the year against Alabama. So for Auburn, if they win at least eight ball games, I think that's a good year for them considering all that they lost from this past season's national championship squad. The Arkansas Razorbacks last season went to a BCS bowl game as well. Arkansas, though, is in a little bit better shape than Auburn because they have a lot of players back, including the running back, Nile Davis, whom last season gained over 1,300 yards and was an all-SEC selection. The receiving course for the Razorbacks, some of the best receivers in college football, including Greg Childs and Joe Adams. The offensive line, though, is going to be fairly new, including both tackles, and the quarterback in Tyler Wilson takes over for Ryan Mallett, whom left early for the NFL. So for Arkansas, at least their ground game's intact. Wilson, though, has huge shoes to fill for the vacating Ryan Mallett. Defensively, Jerry Franklin returns at linebacker. He's an all-SEC player. Arkansas didn't have many problems last year getting to the quarterback. Their problem was defending the run. So that's something to watch out for if you're an Arkansas fan. Their schedule for the third straight year, they play Texas A&M, that game in Arlington. And Arkansas's two toughest conference games will be on the road against LSU and Alabama. Last year, they got to face both teams in the Razorback State, and they were able to win one of those games. This year, they'll have to split those two games to have any shot at the SEC West. I foresee Arkansas having a good year, but I don't foresee them winning either road game against Bama or against LSU. Now, Mississippi State last year went 9-4, and won their bowl game in convincing fashion over Michigan, and returned the quarterback in Chris Welf, and also returned the running back in Vic Ballard. But the problem for Mississippi State, it's going to be on the defensive side. They lose all the linebackers, and Manny Diaz, their defensive coordinator who did such a good job um, while he was there, he's now the defensive coordinator at Texas. So Mississippi State defensively is going to take a step back. I don't have any doubt about that. They should still be good enough, though, to win seven or eight games this season. Their non-league schedule is a joke. Mississippi last year, the Rebels, Ole Miss, offensively they scored a lot of points, about 30 a game, but defensively they gave up about 36. Could be another long year for um Houston Nets team, they only won four games last season, and they have to replace seven of those defensive starters. So Ole Miss is going to have to win their games this year in shootouts, and I don't see that happening, at least not all the time. LSU returning nine starters on the offensive side, including Jordan Jefferson, the quarterback, and they return uh, many of the receivers and the ground game of most of their offensive line. So good news. Bad news is last season their passing game, for the most part, was non-existent. That part has to get better. And if you're an LSU fan, you're hopeful that Steve Crabthorpe, who's now the new offensive coordinator under Les Miles, you're hoping that that will be what kickstarts this offense as far as the air attack. Crabthorpe was the offensive coordinator at Tulsa and Louisville, and those teams were highly known for their passing games. 
On the defensive side, seven starters are back. That's the good news. And also your return to potential All-American candidate and cornerback Morris Claiborne. But two big losses. One, losing cornerback Patrick Peterson, first round in the NFL. And you also lose Kelvin Shepard, who was the team's leading tackler. The defense will be good. I don't see them, though, being as good as they were last year. LSU's schedule includes games against Oregon. That game will be in Arlington, Texas, at West Virginia, as well as home games um, against Arkansas and Florida. But that road game at Alabama, I think, will prevent LSU from winning the SEC West. The Tide, by the way, I'm picking them to win the West because they return 10 defensive starters. They do lose Marcel Darius, but he was the only loss of note on the defensive side. The safeties could be the best in college football in Robert Lester and Mark Barron. And on the offensive side, the ground game is going to be tough. You lose Mark Ingram, but Ingram missed part of the season because of injury early on, and Trent Richardson really picked up the slack for the tie. He returns. Most of the receivers are back, even though you lose um, Julio Jones, a new quarterback in Greg McElroy, but nearly every offensive lineman is back. So if the Tide's ground game gets going, that will help the passing game. And again, their defense is going to be stout. And I look for Bama to win the SEC West for those reasons. The SEC East, Florida, Will Muschamp, welcome to college football as a BCS head coach. You inherit um, a team whose defense needs to replace seven defensive starters. That's right, only four starters back on the defensive side for the Gators. Now, offensively, the quarterback returns in John Brantley, and that will mean also, because um, Florida's going through a coaching transformation, you acquire a new offensive coordinator in Charlie Weiss, who's offensive coordinator at New England and at Kansas City just recently, and was head coach in between that time at Notre Dame. It'll be a pro-style offense as opposed to the spread option, which Florida ran a lot of in recent years, especially when Tebow was there. So. Maybe the pro-style offense is what John Brantley needs, who, again, threw more picks than touchdowns in 2010. Florida's schedule is going to be too tough, and there's too many defensive question marks for them to contend in the SEC East. Playing at South Carolina, at LSU, at home against Bama, and at the end of the year in non-league play, a nasty game against Florida State, perhaps. So Florida, probably a 7 or 8 win season is likely for them. Tennessee and Kentucky last season both finished with 6 and 7 records. Um, and both have to replace a lot of skilled players, especially um, for uh, Kentucky. The Wildcats lost their quarterback, lost their running back, and lost their leading receiver. So we'll see how Kentucky handles that. I would perceive them finishing probably fourth in the division, maybe fifth. Tennessee at least returns two quarterbacks and Tyler Bray, who um, last season um, was the starter in the last four games, won all four of them. Granted, it was not against as tough a competition as what Matt Sims faced the first eight games of the year, but at least um, Derek Dooley has the luxury of both of those quarterbacks uh, who had valuable experience last season. The front seven is where Tennessee's going to get hurt this year, um, only returning two starters amongst the front seven on the defensive side. So look for Tennessee to uh, really take their hits on defense, but at least the non-league schedule for both the Wildcats and the Volunteers isn't very difficult at all. Vanderbilt Commodores are just simply put awful. They only won two games in all of 2010, but at least in 2011, they returned all the offensive starters, and it's going to be pretty hard for them to duplicate or do even worse than 2-10. and 10. So expect a slight improvement for the Commodores. Georgia, they have a pretty easy schedule. The Bulldogs don't play Arkansas, LSU, or Bama, and they get South Carolina at home. The problem the Bulldogs are going to have, though, is that in past seasons, they've been underachieving. So Mark Richt, you wonder how much more time is he going to get to get Georgia back to the glory days. They at least returned the quarterback in Aaron Murray and the flanker in Tavares King. About half of the starters returned for Georgia on the defensive side, but they simply put do not have the talent that South Carolina has. I'm going to go with talent over the easier schedule. The Gamecocks return a lot of their playmakers from 2010. The defending SEC East champions have Steven Garcia back at QB. Very good running back in Marcus Lattimore. And a potential All-American candidate just like um, Lattimore in the form of wide receiver in Alston Jeffrey. Defensively, um, some talent there on the defensive side. And a guy that could be All-American at the end of the season in Devin Taylor. Schedule's a little tougher than Georgia's playing at Arkansas at Mississippi State, but they at least void both Bama and LSU. 
and they get Florida at home. That game at Georgia, though, I think South Carolina will win, and I think that will be one of the difference makers in the Gamecocks winning the SEC East for the second straight year. But they won't have enough answers against Alabama for the SEC championship in Atlanta. Too good a defense for the Tide. That will be one of the big differences in that game. So I look for Bama to win the SEC and to play for the national championship on January the 9th. I think they're going to be that good. So who do I have um, playing against um, Alabama for the um, national championship? And who do I have winning it? Well, you'll have to keep watching future shows to uh, find out. We'll continue our previews all the way through mid-August. My next preview, by the way, will be the Pac-12 Conference. I hope to catch you back soon on this very webpage. So long for now.